Okay, but Bob Jr. Yeah, yeah, Bob Jr. Yeah, that's what people call me. So if anyone wants a discussion about Christianity and what contentions might be, that's fine. Uh, what are you, you Christian? Go to yeah, I'm Christian. You go to what, what are you, sir? Just like um, Afghanistan. I don't believe in don't believe Do you want to discuss about your atheism? Yeah, yeah. Not really. So why are you an atheist? Because there's no God. So what, what is the premise which would follow the conclusion that there is no God? Universe, the vastness of universe. Well, I'm going to Tell use me, a basic no theist argument that you know, code necessitates a coder. So are you saying that? I don't know. Yes, not so, for fact. No. Okay, so you don't no know. One for knows. Fact. So yes, would you say that there's a higher deity? It. Would you say there's a higher deity? So like, what are you? What's your moral frame? What's your well, framework? I believe in nature and stuff, but I don't believe there is so a creator that okay. created this god. So like would you, like for example, planet and then set set. So you're rational. Gave us sets of rules and stuff saying if you don't follow these you're gonna to go to hell if you follow these you're gonna to go to hell okay. like, I don't believe in that simplistic basic like stone age kind of era okay so knowledge. you're a naturalist so your moral framework would be grounded in what nature is around you correct? I don't live by moral okay so like your logic and what you perceive is through nature correct yes so how do we know from what is is what ought to be so you get nature and you correlate that to your morals, to your logic. So I'm just trying to ultimately ascertain the correlation from what is is what ultimately ought to be. I don't know. Well, that, that's the question posed by naturalists and rationalists. That ultimately, you observe this world here and you show that's ultimately what ought to be. So what's the correlation from what is to what ought to be? No, it's I can see that, I can feel that, I can test it, I can experience it. So right? I'm going to go down. That's to be that exists, okay. right? So do you, do you affirm like logic? Yes. So would you say logic is mind dependent or mind independent? Logic is mind dependent or independent. Yeah, so like is it something that we've just created or is it something we've discovered? So it's something out there. It's transcendental, but it's a principle. It doesn't which exist, but if you stuff. if you follow certain stuff you can see there's a logic there, right? Okay. This cause so and so effect. Can you so this happened because of this, so that's logic, right? Okay. So but you would say like it's not it's not dependent on an observer. Factual, so. It's rather something that's always there. Yeah. So with matter space and time you have logic. The three laws of logic: the uh, law of non-contradiction, the law of identity, and the law of excluded. <coughs> These are the classical laws of logic. And you would affirm that they exist mind independent. So if there was no humans, they would still have these principles, yes. these laws. Okay. So what's your justification in affirming their existence? Well, we, 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 I, I can observe, right? That would observe, just be. Right? I, be I can observe. Question. I can see myself, right? I read books, for example. Yeah. But I also I can see nature. So something happens, and that's the logic. There's a logic. So you would say that's self-evident. Yes. yes. If if you observe it. Yes. So like, what would you be observe. your criterion from what is self-evident and what is not? My because it has to be a prior criterion. My observation. Because obs your observation. Yes. So would you say that through your observation you can come to a justification of logic? So let me get this right. So in order to have, you would say senses is your observation, correct? In order to have observation, you must have sense data. So in order to make the statement that you have integral sense data, you must have logic. You must presuppose logic and the presuppose the law of consistency. So your worldview is self-refuting in a circular. Okay, yes, yes. But so how does that prove that? Yeah, I'm just going to simply posit that my world is more coherent and it has the explanatory force to ground these concepts. Okay, right. So Give when you me. say that I need sense data... Explanatory. Okay, okay. Go so you say, you say sense data, your observation, will come to the conclusion of logic. But in order to come to the conclusion that you have integral sense data, you must have logic to affirm they're integral. Yes. So it's circular. You're begging the question in both instances. So do you see the issue? Your world, view, your world, yourself refuting. Yes, yeah, I see the issue. But how does that? Well, I'm not. Your, your, your argument. Yeah, proves my argument. God. Yeah, my argument by, is. By by invalidating my reason. I, I, I would know. argue the Trinitarian God of the Bible is necessary to ground and complement these categories, these transcendental categories. Yeah. So your worldview obviously can't satisfy them. It doesn't complement them. It doesn't ground them. You have no epistemic justification for establishing these concepts. So I'm saying your atheism is self-refuting. You have no epistemic justification for appealing to logic. Yes, I agree. Yeah. You agree. So you you do see the issue with this, correct? Yes. 
Yeah, okay. So, no, what really, is but I want to see what, yeah. how so, God is. So, I want, I want you to answer the question. Yeah. Because my. I know where, how you're yeah. coming to debate this, invalidating my reason, but yeah. I want to use So, the like question. you are, the firm logic is mind independent and is grounded in the mind of God. So, my God has the explanatory power to ground these concepts. Therefore, my world view is more coherent and justifies yeah. and justifies the notion that my Trinitarian God is a necessary being in all possible So, your, your God, your book, your God says there is a single entity created this vast university. Yes. And if I don't believe in it, there is a hell waiting for me. And if I believe in it, there is a hell. Well, I would, I would affirm some form of uh, invincible ignorance. Obviously, it's, it's right. Very no, I'm just saying. No, like, you, 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 do you agree? The, yeah, I, I agree in the concept of heaven right? and hell. And I agree that if you get give the courtesy to God, that you do not have a relationship with Him, He will give the courtesy back and eternally distance himself from you. Yeah, that you, is hellfire. Yeah. It's not, oh, could you yeah, accept it's, the, uh, how, how big is the universe? Yeah, I'm yeah. not a young earther, and I affirm what science tells me about the universe. So and our how, Church how Fathers does actually talk about science being the book of nature, and how we should follow how the book of nature. How big is the universe? How big is the universe? I have not off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 90, 50 billion light years? Yeah, the majesty of God. Right. Okay, that's light years, right? Yeah. That's, 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 that's yeah. sort of big. So if God created that universe... Yeah, he created all of it. And the if he looks at us, he doesn't see us. So maybe it's very insignificant. He's only the, the whole Earth in the galaxy, okay, it's, you can't see it. See, it's, 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 so you say that God... Of that magnitude, that power wants me to believe in him. If I don't, I'll he wants you to have a relationship. Why? Is he? Like, what? He doesn't need me. He doesn't, he I doesn't I, need you. Do you He's do self-sufficient. Are you aware of your like microorganism living on your face right now? I'm, I'm aware, aware of the science. Which I, but that. are you aware of it? Yeah, right? I'm aware. So if there is a god, it might be that type of god, right? Yeah. I, accidentally, we've got created, but he doesn't have a hell or heaven, right? Hell or heaven is for the. When there was no science, yeah, there was no science. When there was no science, hell and heaven is a courtesy given back. You do not have a relationship with me, therefore, I will not have a relationship with you. Strange, so you, I ban you. Yeah, so it's a courtesy given back. But I love you, so yeah. But we eternally it's like your mum you know, telling you to your child that yeah. like, child, like, if you listen to me, like, if not, then it's not No, it's not an eternally God. loving God who's created Jesus. you out of love, out of no necessity but to love. If you do not love him and have well, a relationship love, with him, what is love? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to have, like, if somebody says, oh, I affection. love you, I'm like, I don't want to love you, leave me alone. So that should, they should leave me alone, right? Okay, so would it follow that if you, do, you never talk to me, I will never talk to you in, in respect? That's the relationship, right? Okay. So when it comes to judgment, why should I go to hell? The courtesy will be given back to your intention, your motivation. Which is your hell. intention which is, which and motivation, hot, right? Which is like burn. Because you you understand that hell is a deprivation of what good is. Good is God. What is immoral is a deprivation what is, what is of good. Hell? What is hell? It is a form of punishment, a realm which is deprived of God's goodness, and where you will face righteous which judgment. Is primarily, if you don't believe in like Christianity, if you believe in Jesus, no matter what you do. You still go to him. If you don't believe in it, you go no, to him. No, I affirm. No matter what hard good you I do. affirm acts and faith, and I would affirm some concept of invincible ignorance. Whereby, if God will meet you down on your level. So, if, if you're ignorant, if you have the intention to seek a deity, but you do not have information or access to the information that you're supposed to read, God will meet you down on your level. But as a current, you are talking to people in the path about Christianity. You obviously know of Christianity, so you'll be judged accordingly to your knowledge. And if I don't have a knowledge of God. Yeah, so if you're like a monk, for example, which has no knowledge of Christianity and you had good intentions, it's not for me to say, but given in that particular situation, I know God can meet me down in your level. To me, you know, to, to me this sounds like a cult. A psychopath created a cult. It's not a psychopath. Yeah, My God is ontologically good. No, that's, that's what to me sounds like. It may it's sound like to you, but I need to see a control over people through fear and other, etc. Et uh, I need to see a justification any, any, for that Almost claim. any religion. Yeah, I need to see a justification for that claim because my God, in my worldview, is ontologically good. Vatican is a prime example of that. Vatican. Yeah, these, are, these are infallible people. I don't affirm the fallible. The, I don't affirm the fallible. Vatican. It's fallible, not, not fallible, not infallible. I affirm that he's the Church Bishop of England. Of yeah, they're Christian. They may what well, I consider to have on Christian ideas, but they're Christian.
But again, these these are fallible people. The Vatican are fallible. I said in fallible. That's my problem. Like, they believe in Christians. Yeah, they, they, we are all Christians. I may consider in my world view for them to own Christian like pr Protestant and uh, um, Orthodox. But Orthodox. I would consider some positions of Protestants unchristian, but I would still consider them Christian. They hold some unchristian ideas, but they're still Christian. And I'll still love them and a brother in Christ. Jesus didn't have even a donkey. The Vatican lives in a Lives in a heavily guarded yeah. palace, right? And I'd love you to go to the Vatican. I affirm that he's the Bishop of Rome. I don't believe, I don't believe in the success. Well, uh, again, this really, again, this presupposing my paradigm that the Bishop of Rome does in fact exist, and uh, apostolic succession, the laying of hands from the original apostles of Christ. And you enjoy the heaven? Are uh, you what? <laughs> I, I, I can't say. <laughs> no, I, I want to go no, to no, hell. You do not want to go to hell. I do, I do. I do. No, you, I do. you may like, <laughs> I see <laughs> atheists <laughs> in the park <laughs> saying, <laughs> well, I, even, I, I, even I was, if hell will fire I, I, I was a Muslim and a Christian. Christian. Right, so so but, why why did you leave it's... those respected faiths? Because it makes sense. Why? What does not make sense? Sorry, it just doesn't make sense. What, what, you're just saying it doesn't make sense. I told you, I told you, like in the grand scheme of the universe, yeah. that we're insignificant, we don't exist. And then there is a God. That God, God, God has an importance. God has a lovingness to us. And and said we have to follow certain simplistic common sense to go to heaven. If, if not. Believe in him, he has to go Absolute through faith. If not, and he'll meet you down in your level. And, and if not, we will go through him. We'll like, we'll go Again, through you have an extremely him. simplistic idea. It's not that you get on a weighing scale that, and you could do that well, but it's not simplistic. Do you think do you think a God reviewing your entire life is simple? Why would God, why would God need to review he my entire life? Brother, he wants a relationship. I don't get it in the judgment day. Why did God have to say, look? Because he wants Four years ago, you did X on that minute. No, actions. You, I don't no, know. No, 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 no good actions. You don't look the women, so you go to hell. Like, no why did, actions. Why did you to Again, you have this God. Greek mythology about what heaven is. No good actions. Yes, that's what he's all actions no, All actions fall short of the grace of God. He wants a relationship with you, and that relationship requires acts. If I believe... Why does hold he on, want to have a If I believe... Why? Hold on, hold on. Why, the, hold why on. God wants to have a relationship? I'm going to answer your question, and I'm going to go back to the original question. So in order, hold on, hold on, hold on. In order to believe in obedience of Christ, I must act in accordance to God. So it's not a weighing scale; it is acts and faith. Both go hand in hand with each other. Why, why he wants a relationship with you? He made you in the rationale of God, the image of God, to have a relationship with you out of pure lovingness. He's ontologically good, and. For us to go around in this sinful world allows for greater good, such as repentance and forgiveness. How, how big is God? Who is God? Man, He's women, atemporal. Man, woman. He's atemporal. Atemporal. It, it's not something physical. It's, how big is it's it? not a temporal thing. So God's somewhere? Is it like where is the heaven? Like, it, atemporal. It's beyond our existence. Beyond our existence, so magnificent, but I still want to have yeah, the majesty of compulsory God. relationship. Yeah, the majesty of God is beyond our existence, is beyond our comprehension. And God will come down as an energetic manifestation to, for us to be, understand like, the majesty like of it, God. Because, you see, man made the God because no, God, God was an answer to unknown questions. So if anybody, no, I, people not, didn't know what was going on, they thought like, oh, it must be God. They looked no, at the moon and said, where is the moon? Yeah. Like, oh, so that's the must be the God. The, now they yeah. said, no, moon created because of etc. 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 of the God. We can explain it. But now you say, what is God? They're like, we can't, we can't comprehend that's it. The, that's the God in the gap fallacy, and that's not wrong for me. I'm not. I use the transcendental argument, and I use a few classical theater arguments. I never pointed to these are all man made. I never filled into God the Fills. I know, these are all man made. Well, it was good to speak to you. I think, glory to be to God that you come to Christ. Okay? I'll be praying for you. But please, please, have you read, your, have you read the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Have you read the Bible? So, so, so what does not make sense about the Bible? It's like a story. It's a story of a real thing. Of a real incarnate Christ. How can you be so sure? Yeah, how can you be so sure? Well, how can you be so sure? Yeah, I think, yeah.
It's, it's very similar to other stuff. So no, it's not. If you go to look at the pharaohs and stuff. Yeah, I've looked at the stuff. pharaohs, I've looked uh, at the Hindus, which are the similarities. Okay. They've like copied each other. Okay, so you understand Judaism, or the narrative of the Old Testament, was the first scriptures to introduce the idea of a monotheistic God. Judaism is just another level of nonsense. Wait, hold on. You do understand the Old Testament was the first scriptures which posed the idea of a monotheistic God. The ancient Egyptians, they were pagan. Do you know how revolutionary it was the idea to worship one God? He does. He very much does. He does exist. He does exist. Do you see the passion in that lady there? Do you, do you think that's a lady who's misunderstood or she generally she's, believes? She's, she's, she's going to heaven. She thinks she's going to heaven. I can't say that. You can't say that. I can't, I can't say that. She's going to heaven. But if there's no I God, she's not going to go. I'm and brain, she's scared of hell. I was saved. Well, I, mean, I, I heard a Catholic priest say this, and it's very powerful. I was saved yesterday. I'm saved today. If you, know, and if you believe in the Bible, you don't believe tomorrow. in hell and heaven. It's, it's like you, you, you just thought you're not Christian. Yeah. Well, do, uh, do you actually think you'll change your mind? Or do you think you uh, what, would, what would I have to provide to you to change your mind? No, nothing at all. Okay. Well, this is going to be a fruitless discussion. <laughs> it was good to speak to you. Ash. Ash. Very good. Well, uh, I'm just going to move around a bit, see if there's anyone else. Yeah, uh, give a wrap up on this conversation. Okay. So, what, what, so what, what happened there? We had the guy originally talk about um, how all three religions should unite under one moral framework. I disagree. Islam is way less, well, way less unethical. And then we had the atheist brother come here. He posed some argument that obviously my God doesn't exist. I was able to handle it well, but it's ending up to be fruitless. So I want more fruitless, uh, fruitful discussions at the park. And God willing, I may find some. So God bless everyone. Thank you. Well done, young boy.